When I post a video on the topic of junk journals, invariably I get a comment to the effect of, but I still don't understand what is the purpose of a junk journal? What do you do with them when you're done making one? Well, that's what I'm talking about in today's video. And in addition to that, I'm going to show you my favorite method and what I think is the easiest method for creating a simple junk journal. So first off, what is the definition of a junk journal? Why are they called junk journals? So the technical definition of a junk journal is a handmade book of recycled and found materials and ephemera. Materials can be found or recycled or secondhand, so junk journals tend to turn out unique or eclectic. Okay, so then how is that different than, say, a scrapbook? The difference is in function. Say, for example, that you go on vacation for two weeks down to South America. When you come home, you want to create a scrapbook of those memories in a linear fashion, most probably in chronological order, from when you arrive to when you leave. That's the purpose of a scrapbook. What's the purpose of a junk journal? That's not important, though I will talk about some possible purposes in just a minute. What is important is the actual assembly and focus on the junk journal itself. Now they're called junk journals because you are using things that you already have. They are leftover scraps. They are repurposed items. You are giving things a second life in this creation of a book. Now you're building something from scratch, and since you're using recycled materials, there is a bit more creative freedom in the materials you choose, and also in the assembly. It doesn't need to look like a formal, traditional book. Okay, it kind of sounds like it could be a lot of work. Why would someone choose to create this kind of book? There are many reasons, and I will give you some of mine. So I mentioned creative freedom. So you choose the covers, you decide how many pages are in it, you decide what the pages look like, and how many signatures are in there, and is it a big book, is it a little book? You get to decide if there's a theme. Is it inspired by a favorite novel or a period of time? Is it inspired by a person or an activity? Once you make this decision, it shapes how you choose the materials to put your junk journal together. Still, explain why would someone do all this work? The first reason I would say is creative expression. You get to decide how you want your pages to look, what kinds of materials that you want to use in it, what kind of techniques you want to use. Do you want to experiment with wet mediums or other mixed media? Do you want to put in pockets? Do you want to put in tippins? Do you want to add layers of embellishment or keep it simple? There can be so much fun in the deciding of what to do and how to do it. And then there is the mindfulness and relaxation. There are therapeutic benefits to slowing things down and getting in a flow state by focusing on one thing and blocking everything else out, right? There is this enjoyment that you can get, you can feel when working on something like a junk journal. All right, but what about function? What is the function of a junk journal once you've made it? Well, there are many functions. You could use it as a scrapbook, for example, for your trip to South America. You could use it for Bible study. You could use it as a journal or a diary where you write down, you know, your weekly or daily thoughts. You could use it as a glue book, which is my favorite method, where you use it as a place to put in your collages on the pages. Lastly, what do you do with a junk journal when you're done with it? It depends on what it's intended for. If it's a scrapbook, then you keep it, right? For your memories of your trip. If it's blank, then you might give it away as a gift or you could 
sell it. There's a lot of people who sell really beautiful junk journals on Etsy, for example. If it's a glue book, keep it. I keep mine and I use those as reminders or as inspiration. Um, sometimes when I wanna look, get some new ideas or be reminded about a technique that I used, I flip through those glue books. All right, now I wanna show you a few examples of easy junk journals that you can make and use right away. There are a lot of YouTube videos out there on how to make junk journals, how to make covers for junk journals, how to do all kinds of things for the pages and decorating, embellishing, so on and so forth. I'm not going to do that kind of demonstration here. I will put some links in the description, however, for some good basic tutorials if you are interested. But what I want to show you is that instead of using an old book cover, which you certainly can use, but what I want to show you is to use a, a structure that already exists for your spine and your covers. So this is um, a box that I received something in that I ordered. And it was such a sturdy box. And I thought, wow, this would make a really great journal cover. And for the inside, when I opened it up, it was, it was kind of ugly. So I just used craft paper and uh, glued it with, I don't know, Mod Podge or something to give it, you know, this, to make it stick very nicely on um, this paper. And then I just used regular copy paper for the pages inside and stitched them in. Oh, the stitch is, looks like it's inside of this envelope there. So what I did was I um, kind of very carefully took apart the envelope. When I sewed it in, then I taped it to make sure that the uh, ends didn't come undone once I tied the knot. And then I put the envelope back together and now that stitch is hidden inside. So this is just regular copy paper. Another thing I like to do is to take boxes from the grocery store. So this was just a box of crackers from Trader Joe's. I liked the width of the paper, how, you know, how wide, how many possible signatures that I could get in there. So sometimes when I'm in the grocery store and I'm walking down the pasta aisle, for example, there's so many really nice boxes that are just a really interesting size for a junk journal. This one I haven't put together yet. I'm still thinking about what I want for the purpose and I still need to fix the inside and put on some um, plate pages on the on the front the back and to you know make the spine a little bit more sturdy but then after that i've got this really beautiful cover that i will use as a junk journal now i have this really tiny box i ordered some um watercolors and in a you know in the little pan and i have this really nice box that i would like to use so what I will do is I'm going to figure out, of course, this is the cover, so that, that means this would be the spine here. And then this is the part that I need to get rid of. So first I will cut this open. And then now I can open it up like this and clean it up. So now I'm left with covers and a spine, and it is a little bit bendy, so I will need to reinforce it with something a little bit more, an additional layer of something sturdy on the front and the back. Uh, I think the spine is okay because it happens that this is where the overlap was, where, you know, when the paper was printed and then assembled, this is the overlap of the two pieces. So I think I am good with having this be you know strong enough for whatever I want to do but now I want to decide what do I want to use this for what would I like to do with it 
And there's, of course, so many things that you can do. You could make leave the pages kind of blank, you know, white, simple pages if you just want to have a quick little notebook that you stick in, in a bag or something. Um, you could have it a lot more busy and put pockets and um, all kinds of interactive elements into it. I, I have an idea what I want to do with it. I have some tiny art. I have these clusters that I would like to put into something. Or I also have this tiny art. These are basically ATCs. I made these from a big master board and I thought it would be nice to kind of put them together uh, on some pages in a book. And that would be the perfect size for this, right? So what kind of pages do I put in here and how do I put them in? So your options are to stitch something in with some embroidery thread or something like that. I want to do something even simpler. Now for this book here, this junk journal, what I did was I stapled them in with a long arm stapler and on the spine to cover up those staples, I just used a piece of page from a book. I want to do something similar for this. I want it to be super simple, super easy. I don't want to spend too much time on it or to have it be too fussy. So that sounds like a good solution for me. So when I was looking for paper, I was trying to consider what would look good behind these uh, collages, these ATC sized collages. And I decided that I didn't want to use anything busy like book page because this is already busy enough. So I have this pad of paper, colored paper, very lightly colored, kind of neutral colors. And it's nice because I can use this as, as a background like this. It's nice paper. Or I can also use it for something like this, which is very pretty. I also put inside a piece of this um, Florentine paper. I'm really into this paper right now. It's just so beautiful. And I thought that if I had it here like this, it would also kind of be interesting to have a small cluster next to it. So I have this Florentine paper and I also have this one, which is very beautiful. And I thought about using this for end pages and I've already put one in. And then for this backing here of the spine, I had some extra scraps for when I was cutting down these uh, pages here. And so that's what that spine is, the, the construction paper here. I don't know if you can see, I drew with pencil very lightly where I want to have my two signatures sit. So they're going to be put in like this, like this and like this. And I am going to use a stapler, but first let me put in this end page. Now I have double-sided tape on the back and the good thing about double-sided tape is that it's, you can undo one piece, so only one side is sticky. This is not sticky, so you can position it exactly where you want and then you can press it down. My end papers are in. Now I want to put in my signatures. Each signature has five sheets, including this um, Florentine paper in the middle. So this one and then the same thing here. Okay. So, and actually I think I want this at the end and I want the brown in the middle. There we go. Okay, so how do you actually put them in? 
I have my stapler. This is a long arm stapler. I bought it on Amazon and it was inexpensive. It was under $20. And I have been using it a lot because it's very convenient for putting in, for making junk journals essentially. So what I want to do is I want to um, make sure that I know where to staple in my paper. And I can see that I did not put a mark long enough, a pencil mark long enough to be able to see where I need to go. So let me extend this all the way to the top, I think. I can always erase it later. Okay, and the same thing here. I need to be able to see precisely where the staple is supposed to go. So it's important to have those marks there. Okay, so now I'm gonna line it up so that I can see right where the crease needs to go. Super hard to see. Super hard to show you on camera, but that's, that's the idea, okay? Now, do you need to pinch or somehow put staple, or not a staple, a paper clip or something? I just don't keep paper clips. I know, it's it's crazy. I have this desk and there's no paper clips in it, but, ugh, what are you gonna do? All right, so I'm gonna just do without paper clips. So I will put it in here. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Now I will bend it down. It's gonna need a little bit of encouragement. If you have a bone folder, you can use that to just kind of press it down. And then I will do the same thing for the second one. All right, my pages are in. I had to kind of shade a little bit with my pencil so that I could see exactly where the crease was, but I can go ahead and just erase that out. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and put a little bit of washi tape over this so that the staple doesn't show. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. It doesn't bother me one way or the other, so I'm gonna let it be. But if the paper was very thin or fragile, I might also consider um, you know, using washi tape in the crease of the page, just so that I feel confident about, you know, nothing, nothing's gonna happen. The page is not gonna, you know, tear or fall out. All right, so my pages are in and so far, I have a nice little glue book of two signatures and about 10 pages. And now I can go ahead and put in my pieces where I would like. I might keep this one as a title page, so I'll have nothing there, but then start in here like this. I really like that, looks good. The last thing I also want to do is I want to look at the cover and see what else is missing. What else do I want to do? For sure, I want to co cover up this barcode. That, that has to go. So um, I set aside a few little things. I found some nice little die cut pieces. And I thought that I would put this one here and I would put this one down here to cover up this barcode. So the back is easy. I will just go ahead and cover that up like this. But the front, there's a little bit of a challenge here because if I put this piece here, it's basically floating in this pastoral scene here. Um, and I don't want it to float. I need it to, I need it to be anchored onto something. So I 
have this beautiful piece of old vintage letter. And I thought that I would put a strip of that right down here and then put this on that. Let's let's try this thickness. And I also need to cover up these staples. Those are ugly. And maybe I will use the same thing or I'll have to see, I'll have to see. But my idea was to use something like this and then to put this here like this. And I wanted something with enough of this color, kind of this peach orange. And the closest I could find was this rose. So I think I'm gonna just go with that. Keeping it simple, I'm not doing a whole lot here. That's it. I don't wanna do anything else. That's that's that and that's my, my back. Everything else is, is really nice. Oh, no, I do wanna do this. Uh, what can I put here? I can, I can use another one of these scraps. I have this left over. Let me see if I can find a good shade that would work here. This almost matches entirely. So I could do something like that. Or I could do something like a blue. I could do a brown. Or this gray. I like the really light ones. So let's see to this one. And maybe I can cut it down so that it's just here. I have about a half an inch on the top and I will cut it so I have a half an inch on the bottom. Okay, there, just like that. Now with this, I think I am going to use double-sided tape. So I've just removed one half and now I can precisely put it where I want it to go. And now I can just go ahead and remove the second half. Now it's like I have this label on here, which is nice because I can go ahead and um, put something on here if I want to, something written on the spine. That would, that would be kind of cool. I have time to think about it, so I'm gonna let it be for now. So, so far so good. Here's what I have. I will go through and start putting in these pieces and then I will be pretty much finished. Okay, so here is how my junk journal is turning out. I added this little piece of text to the spine and this little flower bouquet at the top, but otherwise the cover is pretty much intact, original as it was, just these small little embellishments on it. Now inside, I mentioned I still wanna do a title page on here and then I started adding my ATCs on one side this was just a little envelope glassine envelope with some stamps in it a cluster with some rubber stamping another ATC this I did this little um, fold receipt and on the top is just a vintage trade card ATC on the other side. This one was cute. I like the way this turned out. This is just a little um, pocket that I made for this coupon. I really like the colors of the purple, the blue, and then the uh, pink on there. I think it looks really nice all together. So color is an important feature of this junk journal, I would say. Then I just did some collage, simple collage on some of these. Another cluster. And that's as far as I've gotten. I still have more to do. Size wise, I think it's going to be perfect. I think it's not going to get too bulky. I like them to be pretty even so that I can put it nicely into a bookshelf. No alligator mouth for me. I don't like when they get too large. So this is going to, once I'm done, it should be just it should be just right. 
So this is going to be a really cute junk journal when I'm done with it. All right, so I hope that has cleared up some questions you may have had about junk journals. Coming up soon in July is Junk Journal July, where I'm going to be working on a new assignment. My prompt for the month is free. I still don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'm thinking about it. If you have any ideas what I can do with the prompt free, let me know in the comments, please. Last year, I had the prompt postcard for Junk Journal July, and postcards are one of my favorite things to collage on and put in a junk journal. So if you're interested in seeing what I did for that, here is that video.